Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm here to share this card to welcome spring. Let me set this aside and we'll get to the creating. To start our card today, we're going to use the Springtime Joy stamp set. And under my umbrella for a little bit of stamping, let me set those aside and grab a piece of basic white. And I want my basic gray ink pad. And I've got the bunny and the chick to start with. So let's tap on some of that basic gray. And we're going to put the, the bunny I want up just a little bit and in from the right. And then let's do our little chicks. These guys are from Springtime Joy. And let's see. Thinking about spacing here. And then I want a third little chick down here closer to the bottom. Okay, let's pop these out of the way. And while I'm using the basic gray, I want to bring in a scrap strip here. And I'm going to use the large umbrella piece from under my umbrella and ink it in the basic gray. Okay, and then I've also got one of the small clusters of flowers, and I'm not going to worry about the fact that I am stamping outside the lines with some of this, since I'm going to punch that out later. Okay, let's close up the basic gray and take it out of the way. We're going to move this aside for the moment. And then I want to add some masks that I've already stamped and cut out of text weight paper. I do prefer text weight when I'm making masks. Uh, you leave less of a uh, border around your uh, stamped image. And I do like to cut mine right up tight to the line. Again, I'm trying not to leave lots of border. And let's mask our, our bunny here. And then let's bring in the balmy blue. Oops, dip my finger in it a little. And then the other stamp set we're using today is My Meadow. So I've got one of the ground cloud water texture stamps. Uh, there are lots of possibilities. And we're just stamping this over so that we catch all of their um, feet. trying not to pull my mask off. Okay, and now we're ready to do some ink blending. So I want to continue to have my balmy blue out, and then I want, um, make sure this is Old Olive, yes. Okay, and let's grab a piece of scrap paper to put underneath, and my one panel from my um, Stamparatus. How about I stick this over here so that, sorry, I'm having trouble figuring out in my head how I want to arrange this so I'm not always reaching across camera. So let's start with some of the old olive. And I'm going to turn this just because I like to work uh, this way 
Now leaving uh, the ink on the stamparatus plate means that it stays open longer. And what that means is that um, it stays wet. When an ink or a paint or whatever stays open, it means it stays wet longer. So we're just giving a little light green in here. And you'll notice that with just a couple of pounces on my Stamparatus plate, I have enough ink in play to get the amount of green that I want. So let's close up my old olive. And now I'm going to move to the balmy blue. And I want to tap that on here in a couple of places. Just load it up nicely. Okay, and I'm going to start off the edge just as I did with the old olive. And I'm trying not to tap off on my paper as much since I've already tapped off on the Stamparatus plate. I am still starting on an edge and moving across. Now I do want to hold my finger here lightly on my mask to make sure that it doesn't come up. I've got a temporary adhesive on the back, but I, it's not all over. Okay. I think that's enough blue and green to build our scene here. Let me move all of this out of the way and close up my balmy blue. And let's see, I think I want to bring my old olive back in. Okay, so let's open this one up. And then I've got my granny apple green. And then let's see, we've got my grasses and stems here. And let's bring in a little piece of scrap for over on the edge here. Okay, and then let's do some in Granny Apple Green. Just to fill in some texture here. This way they don't look like they're just standing out in the middle of of nowhere. And I think I want one more. Hmm, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Have to stop and think a moment. So let's close these up. And move them out of the way. Next, I want my balmy blue again, and we're going to use our raindrops from under my umbrella to be some little splash drops, because who doesn't like to splash around in a puddle when you're young? Maybe you like to now when you're not so young. And... Let's see, I want to get some little splashy bits over here without going crazy so that our little guy here at the front has some splashing going. Okay, let's close this up and bring in the Melon Mambo. And we're going to add some 
flowers to the top of some of these taller bits. But not all of them. Okay. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and add them here while I'm going crazy with these. Okay, let's close that up. Bring in my Highland Heather. And I've mounted another stamp here on the opposite side. And since we're doing spring, one of the things that reminds me of spring anyway is the phlox in bloom. If you're watching from another area of the world, I'm not sure what you might call phlox, or if you have it, I know that we have things that bloom in some places and not others, aka native plants. And let's put a little over here. And if you think I'm getting carried away, I'm sorry. I do love my um, my spring blooms. So we're just going to fill this up along here. Maybe just a little more here. Okay. Let's close this up and put it away. And now it's time to do a little bit of coloring. So we want to pull our masks off. And of course, all of our guys under here are white. Okay, make sure my fingers are clean before I start and rub here on my adhesive. The temporary adhesive rubs right off. Okay. And I see I've got a couple of oops from my block. I didn't see where I had picked up some of the, the purple, the Highland Heather. So I'm going to quick see if I can... Uh, fix that. So we're going to put this mask back on. And where's our bunny here? Just so that we don't stamp on him, her. And bring this back in. And I've, let's make sure I've cleaned off the corner of my block. And we're just going to add another row of flowers right up there. And that'll take care of that. Okay. Now, let's go back to removing these. And doing some coloring. We'll start with the chicks. Let's move this closer to center. And I'm going to zoom in. And I've got my dark and light uh, Daffodil Delight. Let me get my brush tips for both of these. And I'm just going to start with a little bit of dark around the outside here on the head. And then we're going to blend that in. Okay, and then the same thing, we're going to come with the, the dark around on the body just a little bit and a little under the, the chin.
Okay, and let's do the other two. Same thing, we're just doing a quick little rough outline here on the head. I think it's time for me to remember to pull out those that light daffodil delight from the combo of pens that I just ordered. I put them aside, but it's time to uh, to break it out and start using it. This one is running out of, running out, almost out of ink. And that's okay. It means I've had a good time coloring. And I do have a good time coloring with these. I'm going to go to my bullet tip here for these couple little feathers, three bits on the top. Okay, and then let's close all of this up and put them aside. And I'm going to color the beak with light pumpkin pie. And I'm using the bullet tip for that. Okay, and then let's come in and do our bunny here. And I'm going to add just some light shading marks with my um, light smoky slate, just by stroking in a little bit of smoky slate right where these other marks are, kind of to accentuate them. And that'll do for just a moment. And then we need to color her little floral headdress. And I've got my Melon Mambo and Highland Heather plus uh, a light purple posy that I'm going to start with. And I'm going to use the bullet tips again since I'm working in a small area. And let's start with the Melon Mambo here, and we'll see about blending out with the light Melon Mambo. And we're going to do one more Melon Mambo flower here. Okay, let's cap these up and bring in our purples. Let's see which one is which. That's the light purple posy. Okay, so we're doing bullet tips here as well. And I'm going to start with some of the dark Highland Heather right up against here. And then add some of the Oop, looks like I've capped them incorrectly. This one says light, but that seemed darker. And then finish with the light purple posy out on the edge. So make sure I'm using the right ones. The caps are a very similar color. So I like to read... And then out here with the light purple posy. It gives some nice shading. Oh, that was it, just the two flowers. Okay, let's cap everybody back up and put them out of the way. And then it's time to do some leaves. 
So I've got my old olive and I'm going to use the light and then the light um, granny apple green for my leaves here. So just going in here first with the old olive and then out on the end with that light granny apple green. Okay, and let's cap these up. And I've got our umbrella that we need to color. So as you remember, we stamped this near the beginning and we need to color in. So I'm going to add a, um, oops, Daffodil Delight uh, flower to the mix on our umbrella. And I think I'm going to put it in the foreground and let's switch to the bullet tips on those before I make a complete mess of coloring these in. So let's recap the light end of this and let's just switch this one right around. And that way I'll play nice with myself here instead of challenging too hard by there we go and then this last one here Let's close these up and grab our Melon Mambo and we're going to use the bullet tips again and use this kind of um, tulipy shaped one here in the Melon Mambo. So I just brushed in a little bit of the dark color on the bottom of that flower and then brushing it up, blending it up with the, um, the lighter. Okay, cap these up and then we're going to go with the purples for that last flower and Okay, let's see. And I want a little more shading here where that yellow overlaps that flower. And then let's do it again. And we'll go ahead and kind of shade there. And come back in and add just a hint more shading and then pull that out with the light. Okay, and then let's do it again. Okay, and then we've got a few leaves to color in all of this. And 
And there's my greens. Okay, and the bullet tips. So let's just spot in a little bit of this old olive around here. And then where it's still got a little bit of room, I'll add a little bit of the granny apple green. The granny apple green gives it just a little bit of lift. Okay, and you can't forget these bits that travel into another cell of this umbrella. That's what I was going to end up doing, was not paying any attention to those. Okay, and so there's our pretty bright umbrella, and we need our umbrella builder punch and to punch this out of course you can find this in the annual catalog or my Stampin' Up! store okay so let's just put this in place over here and I've got a handle And I want to ink my handle in Highland Heather. And I want my bunny holding the umbrella off at a kind of jaunty angle. Okay, let's close this up. And we need some dimensionals for the umbrella. Okay, and then let me see. Ah, yes, I did bring in my light balmy blue. As I was blending, I forgot to put a mask over my water, and so I'm just going to lightly touch in a little bit of the balmy blue over here. It'll darken that corner, but take away some of that green uh kind of tint that it's got and we're ready to add this to our card base oh, one more detail before we mount this I'm going to bring in my stamparatus and let's zoom back out to a reasonable distance and put my panel that we've just finished in here and then I'm going to use my balmy blue on my sentiment. Had a moment of panic there. I thought I had checked to make sure that it was right side up and then I thought, oh my goodness, maybe I didn't, but it is right side up. Okay, so let's set these aside and close up my ink pad. And now we're ready to finish up this card. So we're going to add it to a granny apple green mat, which will give us a nice bump of color and brighten up all of those colors that we've already used on the card. In our coloring, let's just square this up here. And this is a very, very narrow mat, just a sixteenth of an inch all the way around and I just want to make sure that I'm straight before I give this a good rub all over. One of the many things that I like about multi-purpose glue is that moment or two of being able to move things 
and it looks like I've got just the tiniest bit of fuzz across a couple of my cuts. So I'll use that file for my nails and then we're going to add dimensionals. Now if you would like to know whether it's time to um, change the blade on your trimmer or not, you can check out my One Simple Trick video that addresses that. Often the blade does not need to be changed and it'll take you just a minute to figure that out once you know the, the tip. Okay, so let's add this and there we go. Our welcome spring card. Everybody looks like they're having a lovely day out. Thanks for stopping in today. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your card making friends. And of course, I appreciate when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so that you're notified the next time I upload a video. And if you're in the U.S., please make some of your Stampin' Up! product purchases in my store. You'll find a link for that in the description below the video. Have a great day. Bye.